computer modeling of a space habitat. The City College Experience. Thesis submitted. In partial fulfillment of the requirements for the degree Master of Engineering, Computer Science, at the City College of the City University of New York by Orlando A. McAllister May, 1991 approved table of contents statement of purpose project initiation the project criteria design philosophy organizational structure activities transportation communications and vital support components role of computers in the overall design role in design other roles description of complete project outcome of the project lessons to be learned computer scientists role space architecture Interview with the designers. Personal experience and retrospective appendix. Bibliography. One statement of purpose it is appropriate that I introduce some details of my background before venturing into this personal odyssey of designing a computer aided space habitat. I was born in Panama on March 20th, 1953 and came to Oliver, New York in 1959. I currently work at the City College of New York. School of Architecture and Environmental Studies. Presently, I am the Vice President of the Computer Science Graduate Club at City College, a club which I co-founded in the fall of 1990. I produced, scripted, and narrated a 20-minute educational videotape for a graduate computer science presentation entitled, Computers in the Sciences. I attended Howard University in 1971 and majored in Electrical Engineering. I earned a baseball scholarship to Howard as a walk-on pitcher. As an intern at Howard, I worked two years as a power distribution technician for Virginia Electric and Power Company in Alexandria, Virginia. I left Howard after three years of study and became a musician, studying flute, tenor, and soprano saxophones at the Brooklyn Conservatory of Music. I returned to academic studies in 1983 at City to pursue an undergraduate degree in computer science. The study and discipline acquired in computer science has led me to perform comparative studies in other disciplines. I am a member of the Planetary Society, the National Space Society, the Construction Specification Institute, the Union of Concerned Scientists, the American Association for the Advancement. Two of Science, the Association of Computer Machinery, and the Armed Forces Communications and Electronics Association. I enjoy television station management and operations and was financial officer and production manager for the Students for Arts, Media, and Education Television SAME, a student-run organization at City College. SAME delivers programs in education, entertainment, and information to the student body at large. I have covered events such as the Mandela visit to City College with Ted Coppell in Aaron Davis Hall in the summer of 90, coverage of the music department's jazz singer series, the dance department's choreographed dances, and the International Physics Symposium sponsored by world-renowned nuclear physicists, Dr. Mickey Keiko who teaches at City College. We cover other events on and off campus as well. My strong point in television and video work is Director of Photography and Station Administration. I am also a member of the Film and Arts Foundation, and the Association of Independent Video and Filmmakers. I was formerly an op editor for the campus newspaper at City College and had a column section entitled Science Scope. In that section I wrote topics such as the advantages of local area networks at City College, a report on the space habitat design competition, see appendix, and the issue of making the campus community literate in its use of microcomputers. The last article was included before the advent of the Personal Computer Purchasing Initiative supervised by President Bernard Harleston, Provost. Three Pepper, and the Director for Computer Services, Stephen Brown. I supervised the cabling and installation of a Novell local area network at the School of Architecture. I am presently the SU-12 Revisor of the network, and my primary duties and responsibilities on the network is to troubleshoot problems. I also issue ID SAND passwords to network users, and write online help manuals and script files for professors, students, staff, and guests. I was fortunate to have met the following popular personalities, Lou Gossett actor, Senator Boren Senate Intelligence Committee, 
Arthur Ashe tennis star, Ossie Davis actor, Sue Simmons anchor, NBC News, Bill McCleary Fox News, Doug Johnson anchor, ABC News, Sheila Jordan recording artist, Reverend Jesse Jackson, Dr. Mickey Keiko, Mark Jackson NBA basketball player for the Knicks, and Michael Jordan NBA superstar for the Chicago Bulls. I have also had the honor of speaking to Mayor David Dinkins when he visited campus earlier this year to commemorate the 147th anniversary of Santo Domingo Independence. I was introduced to U.S. Navy Lieutenant Commander Mario Runco, Jr., astronaut and alumni of City College, class of 1971, who will be mission specialist on board the shuttle Atlantis which is scheduled to be launched in November of 1991. Astronaut Runko visited the college in May of this year, and autographed a picture of himself addressed to the Computer Science Graduate Club. I sensed that Mr. Runko had a great admiration for City College and returned to the school to exemplify leadership and interest. For I have a deep love for my community and the planet in which I am a part. I hope to someday contribute to humanity's technological evolution and help sustain and replenish whatever valuable resources remain at large. With this in mind it seems only appropriate that I take this opportunity to investigate and accept the design challenges of the future. I wish to further extend that investigation by constructing computer-aided space structures which will assist rocket and planetary scientists, space architects, and construction engineers. Computers will inevitably become invaluable tools for space exploration, the life sciences, the search for the possibility of life elsewhere, and the manufacturing of valuable resources on extraterrestrial bodies. As eminent astronomer Carl Sagan once wrote, by examining other worlds their weather, their climate, their geology, their organic chemistry, the possibility of life we calibrate our own world. We learn better how to understand and control the Earth. 17 There is a possibility that insights gained in this thesis can assist scientists and space planners by closely analyzing the reasoning design processes of a human design expert. In the future, most of this automated expertise will be designed by computer scientists who will be imbuing machines, specifically robots, with reasoning capabilities and artificial intelligence to perform space exploration. This paradigm, along with others, will be of great help in assembling structural components, monitoring communication facilities, and adopting reasonable political and sociological. Five infrastructures in the hostile and unknown environment of space. Project initiation as a member and subscriber to several space organizations and magazines, I was interested in a poster mailed to the School of Architecture describing a space habitat design competition. The competition was sponsored by the National Space Society under the auspices of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. The National Space Society is a non-profit, publicly supported organization promoting the exploration, the development, and the habitation of the space frontier. At the City College School of Architecture and Environmental Studies I showed the poster to several architecture students who became interested in the challenge of designing a self-sustaining habitat. I asked them if they wanted to join and mentioned that the winner would win $2,500. We immediately scheduled meetings, and four members were totally committed from the start. Three others acted as consultants. The project was dubbed ProGem, Program Exploration of the Moon and Mars. The form of the structure was inspired by the The Atomium Geodesic Doom exhibit displayed by the Germans in the 1936 World's Fair in Munich. Most of the domes built are derived from an icosahedron. The triangles of the icosahedron are subdivided into smaller triangles in a method popularized by R.B. Fuller. Geodesic domes can be dot of different frequencies, other breakdowns, and can be generated from six other shapes, such as the octahedron or tetrahedron. They can also produce other than dome type shapes. 13. The most important characteristic of the ProGem habitat is that it will act as a transit and resupply way station. It will also be a takeoff station for smaller spacecrafts for further excursions and reconnaissance flights beyond Earth's boundaries. It specifically targets bodies such as the Moon, Mars, and asteroids. The ProGem team discussed the principal criteria for the design of the space habitat. 
I asked my crew if they wanted to officially register for the competition, and they agreed. I submitted their names to the National Space Society as eligible members of ProGem. We were asked to assign a project serial number of 4ATV721. I observed each member carefully to see whether they would have the ability and slash or interest to evoke their imagination through dialogue with other members. Eventually their ideas would be assimilated, translated, and interpreted by a computer-aided design package in the implementation phase. As no homo sapiens is an island unto themselves, this thesis is an interaction among a group of conscientious individuals working towards a common design goal. The project criteria with the space habitat, there are three priorities driving the design. The first, of course, is safety. The second is AI ability over its lifespan. And the third is the human factor, the person. And the environment, making the facility livable and desirable so people can do their jobs effectively and productively. 7. The design criteria called for three different types of space structures. The freeform design, figures 1 and 5, the Bernal sphere, figure 2, and the lunar base, figures 3 and 4. All entries had to meet following criteria. Closed cycle support, life support and food production systems that minimize or eliminate the need for resupply, provisions for appropriate crops, realistic approaches to eliminating excess heat generated by the colony. Economic sustenance, a logical reason for the colony's existence at mining of asteroids, as solar power stations or as transportation hubs, for example. Radiation shielding, appropriate methods for protecting colonists from cosmic and solar radiation. Transportation, provisions for internal and external transportation. Recreation, the creative use of the habitat's unique environment to make it an appealing alternative to life on Earth. In other words, it has to be a fun place to live. The ProGem team selected the freeform design, and in the beginning the architecture students concentrated more on the form and structural requirements of the habitat. Later on the most vital criteria listed above were then given attention. In our meetings we discussed the following, 1. Orbital rotation and position, 3. Self-induced gravity, 3. Construction methodologies, 4. Space transportation systems, 5. The assembly of space frames in orbit, 6. Irrigation systems through hydroponics, 7. Isolation of each, 8. Note for detachment in case of a malfunction, 8. Crew shifts, 9. Centrifugal forces to determine crew orientation, 10. Communication and engineering systems, 11. Solar array panels for energy and power dot requirements, 12. Onboard computers, minus J mating frame as Jakes, 13. Entertainment, 14. Gardening, botanical areas, and animal slash life sciences, 15. A node's ability to handle its own mini hospital, 16. Gas purification, 17. Docking bay operations, 18. Transportation systems, 19. Decompression areas, 20. Coloring each deck for identification and scope, 21. Physiological responses to human survival in space, 22. Growth capacity, 23. Circulation, 24. Self-supporting amenities, 25. Crew responsibilities, 25. Radiation shielding, and 26. The overall spatial experience while working in the habitat. Chairman Gordon Gebert of the Architecture School suggested that the team concentrate on developing and planning for sound urban and social systems. The reason given was that relationships and interaction with citizens of the habitat should be civilized and orderly as possible. And they should also have the ability to have a high tolerance level for each other because of their living together for a long duration in a closed environment. Design philosophy most of the ideas presented by planetary scientists as well as by my own crew supplied me with a governing design philosophy. Early on I grappled with the question of how function and form will change in the environment of space, and how to articulate that as 9. A structural form 
For me the answer was hidden in the notion of the paradox of designing for the zero-g forces of space which creates different types of forces acting on the body than those of Earth. The affects of a microgravity environment can also create physiological discomforts for the for the crew. Much time was spent considering orbital mechanics, structural shear, and where to position the structure in space, even before the self-recycling air support systems were considered. We consulted with graduate students in physics to determine the rate at which the entire structure will have to rotate in order to achieve one-third the gravity of Earth. We were advised that 3 RPM was adequate for our three, 100-foot radius spheres. The spheres were attached at each vertex of an equilateral triangle revolving at the triangle center, figure 1. Microthrusters were built at each sphere to fire simultaneously and in sync with each other to maintain orbital stability. Organizational structure The program for designing and planning a habitat and its spaces involves a lot of work with much detailing. My readings into astrophysics and the brilliant ideas of planetary scientists of the past, particularly the 60s, helped me to understand that a successful habitat takes a lot of advanced planning and a great amount of insight on the part of the designer. Through research I have come to understand that the overall structure must play important interdependent roles in the design. The most important aspect of the design was in effectively managing the partial. 10. Assembling of prefabricated modules in geosynchronous orbit. In that orbit, which is 22,300 miles above the Earth, the centripetal and centrifugal forces equal, and the habitat is at AI point above the surface of the Earth, offering stability and minimal drag. Computer monitored microthrusters were designed in case the structure deviated from its normal orbital course. The thrusters were also used in case perturbations to the structure affected gravity levels inside, creating an inconvenient situation for the crew members. The safety of the inhabitants is critical in making them feel secure in a rotating body. The crew's spatial experience varied, as to stimulate interest and avoid space fatigue. However, dependency on such a device could prove detrimental in the case of equipment failure. Natural lighting and artificial lighting should enhance or create difference that ultraviolet and cosmic rays direct or indirect may be harmful to some habitat components, computer-driven devices, and especially to the crew. The ceiling height should also vary whenever possible heightening one's spatial experience. Some factors to think of in order to provide the most flexible design are 1. Area footage of available floor space 2. Ceiling height 3. Blockage of sunlight and radiation 4. Climate control 5. Crew flow passages 6. Electrical cable and fluid ducts 7 computer and communication cable network ducts, and 8. Storage of life support amenities. 11 activities in an effort to define for myself what would be housed in a space habitat, I listed certain activities that I conceived of place in it. To this end I have listed the activities for each component of this multifunctional habitat. Recreational facilities will function in microgravity, as well as in a free-fall environment to keep the crew in tip-top shape throughout their sojourn. Entertainment and game rooms will provide interest in space. The most important aspect of the crew's activity is the responsibility of ensuring that supplies are not depleted. It is imperative that the crew meticulously monitor vital life support systems, transportation, communications, and vital support components. The habitat is near side sided for communications and visual connection to Earth. The primary means of spacecraft deployment is by mass launching from the habitat to lunar orbit and other bodies. Space docks contact slash launch surface in proximity to cargo ports and passenger spaceport subsurface space docks for craft maintenance accessed by pad elevators and conveyor belts. Material storage exists at cargo ports and subsurface space docks. Spaceport controls 12 space traffic controls for incoming slash launch spacecraft to contact slash launch surface and mass launcher. Earth communications station for launch slash contact control. 
conveyor platforms to transport crew and materials to all three spherical nodes of the triangular shaped structure managerial and organizational work crew entertainment and exercise areas provisions for artificial light and air for visitors contemplative space artificial reality room energy systems media center for information interchange of communications earth information and data for inhabitants Crop areas for hydroponic food production and earth provide garden environment for vegetation inhabitants. Crop areas are isolated to prevent bacterial contamination. Crop areas provide recyclization of carbon dioxide to oxygen, minimizing oxygen synthesis. Self-sufficiency of colony requires maximum resource recyclization. Nuclear fusion is supplemented by solar collection for initial energy production and life support. 13. Wastewater provides organic nutrients for hydroponic food production, which may be filtered and recycled into the system. Waste heat is converted to electrical storage for dark cycles through heat exchange in radiation coils. Role of computers in the overall design. The aid of the computer for expediting drawings and design ideas was paramount to all the members of ProGem. The computer was a sound tool and was used as an instrument of great accuracy during all stages of the project. In the earlier stages of design, the sketching and preparation of drawings was performed by pencil and paper. As the project progressed the computer-aided design package, AutoCAD, was then used to present those ideas more clearly. The expansion of the mind to soar to greater heights was facilitated with the aid of the computer. According to AutoCAD specialist, with young Gosh of the ProGem team, Designing space structures is facilitated by the computer because of its repetitive element. The computational capabilities of the computer to automate certain aspects of a design idea saved the team much time in the final analysis. The computer ensured us that the project would be completed on schedule. But Young Gosh further added that, it is easier to design for space because the computer is best in linear drawings, it forces one to draw linearly, contrary to a gothic design which is 14 curvilinear and more complex. The key here is the repetition that the computer offers, thus saving the designer time and cost. As I see it, most space structures presently designed, and those of the future will take on internal linear forms. Initially, I was unable to interview the crew on what type of heuristic and reasoning processes they applied as they proceeded because of the demand of the project criteria. I will examine the team's thought processes by performing an interview later. Their answers might shed some light for those interested in this topic as they work towards advancing the high frontier of space exploration for the future benefit of mankind with the aid of computers. As project leader, I was swarmed with much material for performing space research. I wish I had a repository of information before my eyes at a click of a mouse. Perhaps within the next 50 years, integrated world knowledge systems will be developed. These will be intricately woven systems that can learn new domains of knowledge by asking questions of the designers. They will be able to understand very high levels of abstraction and make general analogies that span entire domains. 7. The most effective role for these systems will be as librarians and consultants to anyone who is studying something in depth and needs help in reading through massive amounts of material. These systems could be integrated in a space habitat or earth-based space facility, and told to read massive amounts of material in search of certain concepts or ideas, not just certain. 15. Strings of letters or keywords. Such cognitive abilities, together with tireless speed and infinite patience, will enable them to amass a general knowledge of a new domain faster than the average. Seven topics such as space architecture can be taught by an automated computer instructor. Someday, intelligent machines will finally arrive. Machines that understand natural language will allow people access to information that they never had access to previously. Anyone will be able to get information that today is only available to a specialist. 7. Role in Design My role in the design of the space habitat was to inspire creativity by introducing the members to existing space structures, where they could then develop innovative ideas. I suggested to them that we select a provocative spherical shaped body. We all agreed that the triangular shape of the habitat with three spheres at each node was acceptable because of the stability that it would offer. There are other forms, viz, torus, donut, 
cylindrical, T-shaped, conical, disc-shaped, external tank, etc., that might have worked just as well, but we decided that this form best fitted our design intentions. The idea of the habitat was to make it as Earth-like as possible. I wanted the space habitat to have a normal appearance inside, a comfortable atmosphere and gravity, and a sun. The entire structure would be rotating to provide artificial gravity and wood. 16 act as gyroscope, resisting any change in pointing direction. Other roles I had to be able to coordinate the activities of the team at every instant. Some speculated too much and were going beyond the requirements of the habitat criteria. Others were over-theorizing and adding more complexities to an already insurmountable problem. I allowed the members to work together and jour independently without constraints. They were actually given a lucrative financing budget to complete the design. I acted as accountant and auditor, and at the same time, I was project engineer and coordinator. The team members worked well together, and some were even Star Trek fans, Trekkies. D-E-S-C-R-I-P-R-I-O-N of Complete Project The Complete Project was sponsored by the National Space Society to evoke new ideas from people and organizations from all walks of life. It was unfortunate that only 160 entries were submitted nationally. But, with man's limits to growth, malvision philosophy, and environmental pollution occurring at an alarming rate, man's only hope for future survival will be dependent in space or in the ocean. The abundance of untapped natural resources existing in space must be harnessed in the near future. And that will be dependent on how well man builds structures for the environment of space. Environment has been compiled by Soviet and United States. 17 Astronauts The overall habitat is composed of the following levels and areas, see appendix, mechanical, laboratories, medical, nurses stations and administration, hangar bay, communications, landing bay, control tower, loading elevator, corridors, recreation, living quarters, horticulture, engineering slash mechanical, and lounges. Studies performed in the scientific areas will be very valuable as medical experts will take them into consideration when exploring space and other worlds for human and animal habitation in the later half of this century. Other studies performed in the habitat will be just as important in the next millennium. Outcome of the project The National Space Society thanked the ProGem team and others for entering the space habitat design competition. They believed that the contest was very successful and were looking forward to sponsoring another one in the future. They kept the designs at the National Space Society's headquarters in a special location. Several groups requested to display some of the material and negotiated with various architecture magazines to have some of them printed. The Society's own magazine, Ad Astra wrote an article on the competition in which some designs appeared. The National Space Society was very proud to have had people like the ProGem team show so much support and enthusiasm for the contest. They encouraged us to keep up the good work and interest. 18 in the space program. Unfortunately we did not win the contest. The National Space Society's space design competition attracted upwards of 160 contestants from around the world, including settlement designs for the moon, free-floating space cities, and mining camps on faraway asteroids. The winners of the competition were honored at a special awards banquet, held on May 28th at the 8th Annual Space Development Conference. The grand prize winners received a cash award for the Freeform Division. It was designed by a professional architectural firm from New York City. The theme of their project was Asteroid Resource Colony. This entry was selected for its originality and its execution, which demonstrates sensitivity to shape and form as well as a fundamental understanding of space facilities and the issues involved. The depiction has a very original design in an area that has not received much attention to date, an asteroid mining facility. It has contextual qualities, with a variety of spaces, forms and activities. The judges were also attracted to distinct form follows function aspects and examples of real decision making. However, the judges would want I to encourage this team to take the next step, 
to expand on its potential and take it to a more advanced stage. What is lacking in this entry is the presentation of more human, functional aspects, more developed habitation features and more detail. The judges were unanimous about this aspect of all the entries in this category all of the concepts were overly technical and lacking in care and design for human resources. As a result, 19 there were no honorable mentions awards given for the free form category. 12 Lori Garver, executive director of the National Space Society, stated, we were absolutely delighted to have so many creative entries. The imagination displayed clearly shows the tremendous potential that awaits humanity as we expand into space. Lessons to be learned designing for space is a difficult undertaking. Terrestrial vehicles such as cars, trucks, and trains have been tried and tested over the decades and proven reliable. Homes have been built under moderate earthquake zones which have withstood mild tremors. Ships and airplanes have been designed and their buoyancy and aerodynamics truly tested and measured for safety. But, space science is a new science to a certain degree, and has not had the adequate financial support to have different design technologies tested. The ProGem team had to meet many times even before going to the drawing boards. There are many theories about space travel and design structures existing in the mind of space scientists, physicists, and structural engineers, but not enough financial, nor material support to bring them to fruition. Even NASA in the design of the space station Freedom ran into bottlenecks. For instance, NASA wants to reduce an unanticipated glut of maintenance work projected for astronauts on the proposed space station Freedom. A remote-controlled robot is already planned for simple jobs like 20 servicing a science experiment. It could do even more work if the station design was simplified to make access easier. Future robots to the rescue, advances in robotics might let mechanical men take a greater role in maintenance and repair. 3A report in the summer of 1987 of a NASA task force headed by Sally K. Ride, the former astronaut, shared the vision that robotics exploration in the 1990s and experience in long-duration flight gained on board the planned space station, the next step could be three fast piloted round trip missions to Mars that would take one year each. A mission would be split into two parts, a cargo vehicle and a personnel transport, both of which would be assembled in Earth orbit in stages hauled up by 10 of the heavy life rockets being developed for other Air Force and NASA uses. 11 only time, clever designing and years of practice will determine how feasible it is to assemble large structures in Earth orbit including tank farms storing rocket propellant and then fuel up for voyages to Mars. The rate of progress in robotics and automation will make unmanned expeditions to the planets more productive, will provide strong technological stimulation, and will be considerably less expensive than sending humans along to do the job. Advanced artificial intelligence capabilities with a minimum Earth-based programming relay. The reason for doing any artificial intelligence software project has to do with a payoff of some kind. In commercial ventures, the payoff is frequently 21 measured in terms of profitability, the bottom line. The bottom line can be measured in various other ways such as revenue production, cost reduction, productivity, employee satisfaction, or others. With knowledge-based robotic systems we are concerned with the same bottom lines, but the type of task and the magnitude of both payoff and cost tend to be different from traditional system PROJECT. 111 since safety will be a primary concern in space, unmanned spaceships with robots at the helm would be designed to minimize the risks to humans. Hi everyone, this is uh, Professor McAllister. I'm here where one of the pioneers and innovators from Nebraska. Could you introduce yourself please sir? So I'm Jim Jeffries, currently IEEE President and CEO, uh, graduated from University of Nebraska in 1968, uh, spent my career as a manufacturing engineer, uh, telecommunications equipment, cable and wire, had a significant opportunity mid-career to work in fiber optics, converting a copper cable factory to all glass over a decade, mm -hmm. and introducing the first fiber optic cables that we uh, produced at the Bell System. So we've moved from copper wire, twisted pair, to where we are now, wireless through fiber optics technology? Well, the whole idea of fiber optics was speed. 
Okay. You know, and we had no idea when we started. Originally, it was to be a, a tenfold increase okay. in capacity, fibers handling, uh, high, high quality digital communications. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was intended originally for uh, point to point communications. And the ideas that we would have today with, with fiber optics all over the world, every server connected, every network connected, uh, every cell phone tower connected with fiber was not in the plan. Uh, but as all evolved, and it's been amazing to see the evolution of technology that makes fiber optics where it is today. Now, now you, you said that you go back to uh, in 1960s, so uh, there was mini frames and mainframes, right? The, the IBM 360, yeah, perhaps, yeah. and then well, we migrated to the uh, 80, 286, 386, 486, the 80, and then the Pentium. 80, you can go all the way back to the 8080. 80, 80, 80. You can go back to the 8008, right. you know, and uh, in fact, the first computer that I designed was for resistance testing of copper cable, and computers were too expensive, so I did it with medium scale integrated circuits. An adder circuit, a counter circuit, yes. uh, comparator circuits, yes. and created your own solution for uh, for a digital multimeter. So, so a lot of this has to do with uh, half adders and full adders, right? And what do you do with that carry digit, right? Because we deal in base ten arithmetic, so we have to recycle once we get past nine to one zero, yeah, and then uh, it increases by uh, powers of ten. It is. It's a ten base ten. So originally, what I did was all in, in base two countdown circuits. Right. So just binary countdown until you had a comparison, and that was enough. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible that uh, where we have to change base systems. Now, is it possible to design a computer based on base three? Minus one, <laughs> zero, and plus one. I, and I believe that the brain operates that way. Yeah. So yeah. it's been interesting. I don't know all the evolution of computers, but certainly the idea of, of staying in base two and using risk. Okay. Reduced instruction set computing, you know, provided the foundation for big changes. And uh, now risk continues to be critically important you know, in computers today. Of course, the next step may be quantum computing, have you you know, ever, where we actually have multi-states. Multi-states. Have yeah. you ever met uh, Robert Noyce? No. I read about him. Yeah. He's a great yeah. man. He's yeah, a yeah. Yeah, How about we have a medal named after him at IEEE that we award every year for semiconductor improvements. How about Tim Berners-Lee? No. <laughs> but you know what he did, right? Yeah, yeah. He developed the uh, HTTP yeah. protocol, yeah. which is amazing stuff. Yeah, yeah you know? absolutely, absolutely. Now, your insignia, you showed me your insignia oh. early, because we were talking about um, in inductance, RLC circuits, the right-hand rule. So our, yeah. so our little IEEE logo here, which we adopted, IEEE was formed in 1963 when the power engineers and the radio engineers got together okay. to form IEEE. Okay. And our symbol was a kite representing Ben Franklin's original electric experiments, you know, which we marked with a milestone plaque in London. And in the center is the right-hand rule yes. you know, describing uh, you know, field, fields and flow current. You know, I have a book by Ben Franklin. Did you know that he did a lot in Pennsylvania in education? He was more than just... He was everywhere. He, he yeah. was everywhere. And yeah. he also came up with the university scheme of a provost, yeah. a vice president, yeah. And, yeah. and the roles of these positions. Yeah. It's just an incredible book. Yeah. And what's so, the name again? Uh, Jim Jeffries. And uh, we've got to get into a presentation now, so thank you very much. Hi, I'm here with... Hi, my name is Nita Patel. I'm the Director of Engineering at L3. And I'm with Charmaine Williams, who is our Program Manager for IEEE Women in Engineering. She runs the program worldwide, has over like 800 affinity groups now, and trying to get more women into staff. Yes, we, IEEE has over 20,000 uh, women who participate in our IEEE Women in Engineering program. And would love to have your university participate and start a local uh, affinity group. So we'll be happy to send you some information um, and always contact women at IEEE.org. Okay, I'm Professor McAllister, so I'll get the word out. Well, great. Thank you, Thank Professor. You. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Angel Grant, Director of RSA Identity Fraud and Risk Intelligence. Yes, I, I've been hearing that encryption theory has gone way beyond visionary cycle, prime numbers, and wiretapping that they used to do back in the day, right? So now, is it easier to wiretap a wireless path? Well, well 
first off, crypto is back in vogue these days because of the explosion of innovation and technology, such as the panel we just had on IoT, where you now need to protect and encrypt more traffic than ever before from the edge to the fog to the cloud and think about how to encrypt and protect that. But not only that, but protect the data that goes along with that and the packets that go along with that. And the logs, both structured and unstructured, and encrypt that in a way that cyber criminals can't use it and make it useless to them so they can't monetize it. Makes sense. So the business models have changed, which has been driving the need to innovate with encryption and the whole crypto space to be more sophisticated. So you can't really uh, decipher content if you don't understand what it means. That's, that's what you're saying. Right. And that's right. And that's the advice we give to organizations is classify your most important data. Mm -hmm. Encrypt it. Make it completely useless because if somebody steals it and they can't do anything with it, they right. can't monetize it and commit crime with that. Right. So that is the value of the resurgence of the popularity of focusing on the crypto implementation. So, so, so do you take into consideration circuit switching and packet switching? You need to consider the entire IoT continuum, okay. including circuit switches, packet switches, anything that can be intercepted. Um, one of the things we talked about was the fact that cyber criminals are targeting organizations' processing powers mm -hmm. so that they can do things like crypto jacking. Okay. So basically leveraging that processing power to mine cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, they need to leverage that processing power. So if you design it in a way that they cannot leverage that processing power, mm -hmm. you prevent them to, from hijacking your systems and infrastructure to create that botnet to do things like crypto jacking. Because right now we're at the 5G, fifth generation stage, the Internet of Things, yep. with smart devices everywhere. That's right. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Okay. It's a Let's, fun time to be here and really lots is. of cool innovation and applications. Well, but, especially yeah. pioneers like me yeah. who, are, who are not given the recognition. Because that was my major, electrical engineer in yeah. 1971. And the first microprocessor came out in 1972. Okay. With um, so many transistors on them, you know. Yeah. There's sensors everywhere now and transition. Yeah. And yeah. The, the application of business use cases of that yeah. are just exploding. And, you know, someone who's pioneered that space, you, you probably see so much opportunity for those applications to be leveraged. So that's yeah. kind of cool. Well, you also have what, what was that? Uh, photo, photo lithography to etch a lot of these circuits, which is just incredible. Yeah. yeah, right? Yeah, lots of cool innovations. So there. it all goes back to the basic transistor. That's right. Operations yep. per second. Yep. Yep. Thank you so much. What's the name again? Once again, this is Angel Grant, director at RSA for Thank RSA's Identity Fraud and Risk Intelligence Solutions. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. It says that I'm pushing seven buttons at once. Maybe Perhaps? Try, try your left hand. Maybe your left hand will be better. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's not easy. Go ahead. I have a regret as you, right? I have got $1.6 billion in this bank. Can I get someone to help me out here withdraw some of my money? <laughs> You're on your own, buddy. I'm sorry. I'm sure they got it. You got it all here in cash, right? Well, my fingers are too small. <laughs> Maybe a touch screen. I don't know. It's not going to work. You got to redesign it uh, to your specifications. It's technology. It just—I'm not very good at technology, you know. <laughs> just make bigger machines, right? <laughs> we just need some really large buttons. You got the old people buttons? I could use some of the old people buttons. Oh, that'll work. You know, 
Everyone here is all staring at me. It's like my trunk open or something. Because you look like an alien, that's why. Oh, no, no, this is all start up technology. You know? go from Mars, right? <laughs> Right, this, this is what I'm the county expert. I'm here at City Bank, down at Union Square. I'm hanging out with Lenny Matthews. So we just saw happening. We walked in down the block and we ran into this gigantic alien robot. The robot was actually trying to withdraw money from the ATM machine, but his finger was too large. So we have to redesign either the robot or the ATM machines to the robot's finger specifications. This is Orlando Calvis, and we're going to you live for the Lenny Matthews Show out here at Union Square Park. Until next time. of maintaining life support systems, especially oxygen, poses no problems for robots. However humans in space will constantly fear the possibility that airflow will someday be cut off accidentally, thus bringing an unfortunate end to the inhabitants. Once again, the critical life support systems that the Habitat team struggled with would not be a problem for robots. Much research would have to be made in the areas of sending information, command, and telemetry to a spaceship at a faster rate from long distances for quicker response time from robots and machines. The aforementioned poses another engineering feat yet to be surmounted, can information be sent faster than the speed of light for instantaneous response by robots? The relay of telemetry and command from the habitat to another information gathering orbiting. 22 satellite to ground control will impose an added cost, but a solution nonetheless. The complexities of communicating effectively with remote robots still exist. More dexterous hands that could perform a range of delicate operations would be especially important. In one system under study, left, tiny lights in fingertips would measure the distance to an object, while sensor pads on fingers would measure the force exerted on the object. 
1111 The ultimate feat in my opinion would be to design autonomous robots instructed by computer scientists with the ability to design space structures itself. It will be issued plans from an computer-aided design drawing file created on Earth. The robot would then follow every single instruction in tandem with how the CAD expert instructed it. The robot would be given objects to manipulate and position, as well as to recognize space orientation and to make error corrections instantaneously. It will also interface with a program evaluation and review technique program to track milestones and project completion steps. I asked Professor Horstberger, a world-renowned structural engineer, who teaches at the School of Architecture whether man has developed robots who could build homes, he replied that he has not heard of it.